Hey everyone, it's Shauna, and today we're going to be talking about our anti-harassment and violence policy we have here at Decor. This presentation is called Respect in the Workplace. So within this presentation, we're going to talk about our two policies that we have posted throughout Decor Cabinets that is available to you guys at any time for you to read. We're going to go over the two policies that we have, and you guys have access to it at any time you want throughout the bulletin boards in the plant. In this presentation, we're going to be talking about workplace governing authorities. We're going to be talking about our anti-harassment and violence policy. We're going to be talking about responsibilities in the workplace. And we're going to talk about training and reporting harassment and violence investigations. So the first section we're going to talk about is workplace governing authorities. The first, play, the first workplace governing authority to discuss is the Manitoba Human Rights Code. So the Manitoba Human Rights is an organization that is specifically for the employee. What they do is they provide protection against discrimination on the basis of things like your ancestry, which includes color and perceived race, your nationality or national origin, your ethnic background or origin, your religion, your, uh, which is like religious activity or religious association, your age, gender determined characteristics or circumstances, sexual orientation, your marital or family status, your source of income, political beliefs, political association or political activities, and physical or mental disabilities. This would include reliance on a dog guide or someone who may be in a wheelchair. The second workplace governing authority we're going to discuss is the Manitoba Workplace Safety and Health Act and Regulations. These regulations for us is a standard where we must provide a workplace that is safe and without risk to health so far as reasonably practicable, meaning that we have standards and rules to follow to ensure that this workplace is safe for you guys to work, not only physically but also mentally and emotionally. Section 2 is our actual decor policy. So in this section, we're going to talk about harassment and violence. So the first one is the definition of harassment. Harassment is any improper behavior by an employee that is directed at and offensive to another employee to which that person knew or should reasonably have known would be unwelcome. Examples of harassment is obvious violent or sexual behavior, subtle jokes and teasing towards someone, verbal words such as cyber threats, voicemails, name calling, racial slurs, hom homophobic, bullying or indirect and gossip or rumor spreading. Physical harassment is violent or threatening behavior or actions. Visual is threatening gestures inappropriate language or images at the workplace. And environmental is where you make the work environment hostile. So you not, might not be doing something directly to a person, but you're making the work environment hostile. Another example is leaving inappropriate voicemails or sending inappropriate emails or having hostile images posted in your locker. Next, we're gonna do a case example. So for this one, I'm gonna talk about two people that have been working together for a while um, in this scenario. They're Jesse and Joanne. So Jesse has a habit of touching people on the shoulder or arm when he talks to them and most people see him as a friendly outgoing person. Jesse has worked with Joanne for over two years. Jesse comes to Joanne and tells her, tells her how nice her hair looks. He begins to touch her hair and also tells her how soft it feels. Joanne walks away and later tells another employee what Jesse did and that it made her feel uneasy. So is this a harassment case? Yes. Jesse needs to be made aware that his behavior might be offending someone. Joanne may have encouraged the behavior in the past, but that no longer matters. If the behavior offends her today, it needs to stop. Sometimes we do not know what might be offensive to someone else. Once we learn that our actions have been improperly interpreted, it is best we apologize and never repeat the offense again. Next, we're going to talk about our definition of violence. So the definition of violence is the attempted or actual exercise of physical force against anyone or any threatening statement or behavior that gives a person reason to believe that physical force will be used against them. Examples of violence is initiating or participating in physical conflict in the workplace, subtle acts of aggression that may be received different than intended, initiating or participating in physical conflict at the workplace, threatening words or gestures that may make any other worker feel vulnerable, the next slide, we are going to show a video. This video is intended to show you what happens when coworkers gossip. So you have to remember that gossiping about others creates an uncomfortable environment, and if there's gossiping in the workplace, no one is safe from it. So this video gives an example as to what happens. Did you hear what happened to Jessica the other day? Mm. Alex totally yelled at her about the project. I heard the whole thing. It was really embarrassing. I mean, why did she even work here? She's not a good worker at all. 
<laughs> Seriously. Uh, it's just not good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was an interesting meeting. You know her? I heard it's fake. <laughs> he apparently got dumped because he isn't marriage material. I believe it. <laughs> There's no way she actually deserved that raise. <laughs> I agree. Oh my gosh, Marissa, did you hear that someone this morning got sick in the middle of presentation and left? <laughs> How embarrassing is that? That was me. Oh. Um, were you able to fix that report earlier? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I did it this morning. Oh, okay. Gossiping has a negative chain reaction. Complaining is contagious. Studies show that negativity can increase aggression toward random, uninvolved people and that the more negative your attitude, the more likely you are to have a negative attitude in the future. Studies also show that long-term stress, like that generated by complaining, actually shrinks your hippocampus. That's the region of your brain that affects reasoning and memory. The saying goes, when people gossip with you, they'll gossip about you. And the thing about gossip is, it all sounds interesting and juicy until it's about you. The reason why we entertain and enjoy gossip is because it makes us feel superior for a moment. For a moment you think you're smarter, sharper, faster, better than the person you're gossiping about. Not realizing that the tables can turn very, very quickly. And not realizing that that foundation of your superiority is built on shifting sands. It's the weakest foundation to build your superiority on someone else's inferiority. If you don't want to hear gossip about yourself, stop gossiping about others. After the gossiping video, you'll see a second video about how words can affect others. So remember that any negative word that you could say to somebody has a lasting effect on, a, on them. So this video also demonstrates that one positive word can change in a person's mindset. And remember, kindness towards others has a long lasting effect.
In this section, we're going to talk about personal opinions. So for this, I'm going to give scenarios and I would appreciate that if you guys would pause the video throughout this section and for every question I ask you, I want you to have a group discussion. What would you do in this scenario? So the first one I want you guys to discuss is what would you do if you believe you're being harassed at work? So a harassing could be someone is talking to you inappropriately, they're making you feel uncomfortable, you feel not safe coming to work. If this happens to you, what would you do? Hopefully throughout your discussion, you guys got speak up. Do not let it continue because it will not stop. If you feel uncomfortable, talk to your supervisor right away. The second scenario I want you guys to discuss is what would you do if you noticed that your coworker was being harassed? So something isn't happening directly to you, but it's happening to your coworker. So they're uncomfortable. They're getting red in the face. They're getting awkward. They're shy. They're standing away from other people. And you know that they are not okay at work. What would you do in this scenario? If you said talk to them, that's great. If you feel comfortable enough where you can go up to them and ask like, hey, are you okay? Like, do you need to talk to someone about this? How, like, how are you feeling? That's great, that's nice of you. If you also answered that you'd go to the supervisor and let them know of the situation right away, that's also a good answer. You are looking after somebody that you work with. Next scenario is what would you do if you encountered gossip? Gossip is everywhere in any workplace. It's not just specific to here. We have 545 employees. We have 30 different cultures. Someone is bound to hear gossip at some point working here. If you hear gossip and it's not threatening and it's not endangering someone else's livelihood, ignoring it, don't spread it further. Don't listen in and say words that encourage it to continue. Just ignore it, just stop. It's not worth having gossip here at workplace because remember, if it happens to somebody, it could also happen to you. However, there's another case where if you do find that it is threatening towards someone's life or it is, it has a bad effect, please report it to your supervisor right away so that it can be stopped. Because again, gossip can get bad. The next scenario is you witness threats of violence in person or on social media. If you experience that there may be violence in the workplace, please report to a supervisor or manager right away so they can be prevented. If you see any threatening messages on social media and that it could come to the workplace and put people's lives in danger here, again, please report it to your supervisor right away. And the last scenario is what would you do if your supervisor or your team leader was harassing you? The answer is report it to your manager. If you believe your supervisor is harassing you, go to the next person up. So you can go to your production manager, you can go to HR, or you can go to health and safety and report it to them. Section three is reporting a harassment or violence case. So if you feel that something has happened at your area and you want to report it to your supervisor or report it directly to HR or health and safety, remember, anything you report is private and confidential. Step one is sharing the experience. So what this means is that we want you to step forward and talk to somebody. Talk to someone you trust. Talk to someone you are comfortable with. Your supervisor is there for you, health and safety, the director of HR. One of us will be there for you and we will listen. And within this step, I want you guys to know that we'll always have a listening ear for any situation that you may be in. So with this, your supervisor will have the most experience with dealing with conflict and concerns within the department and human resources and health and safety provides a neutral and safe way to report and will be involved with issue and conflict resolution. So if you report something to us, it will be investigated. Step two is documentation. So this one is very important. The few reasons why we want to have this documented is because on day one of the investigation, every detail of something that has happened is right there in your mind. You remember those details. So we want you to write down the days, the dates it happened, the times, the scenarios, Maybe you even remember who was all there and who was around. So we want the witnesses' names. We get you to write all of that down. The second reason why we want you to write it all down on day one is so that when we're doing our investigation, because typically there are five days, 
and why we want you to write it all down is because then we don't have to continuously go back to you and, can, and ask questions again and again. Because reliving something that bothered you or is affecting you is not fair. So we get you to write it all down and we have all the information on day one. In the events of an investigation, uh, the person who is accused of whatever issue is typically sent home during the investigation because when someone is being reported on for something, it brings a lot of attention and it brings a lot of bad feelings. So we usually would send one person home. That doesn't mean they're in trouble or they're going to be fired or lose their job. It's to keep a neutral ground in the workplace. The next step is for us to do the investigation. So what we will do is for any witnesses that you have mentioned, we will bring them to a private office and continue the investigation and ask them questions. What did you see? What did you hear? Things like that. It's just to ensure that this we can have all the stories aligned and to see where the truth is because we have to keep a neutral ground to ensure that we're doing the investigation fairly. The next thing that we would do is we interview the person who was accused. So we bring them in and we bring them back and we ask them the same questions. Can you tell us what happened? Can you tell us who, what, when, where, and why? Step four is uh, the conclusion. So at the end of the investigation, you will get a formal letter written by the director of HR stating what we are doing at to end the investigation. So when it comes to harassment and violence cases, please remember that harassment is not tolerated at decor and it never will be. In some cases, it will involve disciplinary actions which include suspension, termination, or transfers of departments. It, it's a case by case scenario. Our culture is to bring light into people's lives. And what we mean by this is we want every employee coming to work feeling comfortable and confident in being here. No one should feel unsafe or unwelcome in the workplace. Our culture is a family culture, so we want everyone to feel that they are welcomed here at any time. How you treat people tells all. In the world where you can be anything, be kind. This next video is a motivational video from Fearless Soul, and it's just words of inspiration about being a good person and being kind and how kindness goes a long way. Hopefully it inspires you like it inspires others. A.D. Williams once said, imagine what seven billion humans could accomplish if we loved and respected one another. Just imagine. Imagine if there was no greed. Imagine if there was no comparison. If everyone was running their own race, but cheering for all others at the same time. Maybe we'll never see that in our lifetime. But what we all can do is start with ourselves. Start with yourself. Choose to lift others up. Choose to set the example, the example of kindness and integrity, the example of compassion and understanding. There's a quote that says, no matter how educated, talented, rich, or cool you believe you are, how you treat people ultimately tells all. Integrity is everything. It really is. Who you are is far more important than what you have, and it will always be. Who you are is measured by how you make others feel. Be kind to each other. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. Choose to be the change you wish to see in the world. Decide you will not wait for someone else. You will set the example. Be kind because you never know how much that person is suffering inside. You never know the difference your words can make, the difference your presence can make, the difference you can make to one human life. Last slide. In review, what does DECOR do when harassment or violence is reported at DECOR? We investigate. If any situation comes up to us, we will never leave it alone and do nothing about it. Remember, this is a workplace that we want everyone feeling comfortable being here. So if someone gets reported to us, we will ensure it is investigated and we'll ensure that it has come to a conclusion. And then what can you do to keep decor harassment and violence free? The first thing you can do is examine your own biases and ensuring your behavior is fair and respectful. If you believe you're being harassed, to please report it to your supervisor. If you see someone else being harassed, to please report it to your supervisor. Or if you believe there is violence or a threat of violence, report it to your supervisor. Again, you want to make sure you're coming to work feeling comfortable and confident in being here, so reporting something that you believe isn't right is the way to go. Don't just leave it alone and do nothing about it. Thank you for making the decor difference. Thank you for coming to this presentation, and thank you for listening.